We are streaming, we're streaming, we're streaming. What's this? Previously, you guys have been looking up my nose, and now I have this computer on a box. Doesn't seem quite right. We're streaming, we're streaming, we're streaming. All right, guys, welcome back to Schooly Support number four. Thank you all so much for being here, for being here. Welcome from Niagara, Niagara on the lake. Is that is Niagara correct? In Canada. Welcome from Canada. Welcome, Julie Johnson. I saw all of your questions. Thanks so much for asking them. We're going to address those first. Hey, from Miami. Hey, Jerry. Yeah. Wow. Hydrate and stay safe if you are in Miami. I bet it is super hot there. Hello, Wildcard. Welcome. Welcome from Colorado. Thanks for being here, guys. I normally have some topic I would like to pontificate on. And while I have dozens of topics still to pontificate on, uh, today we're going straight Q&A because I have had a bit of a stressful week. I don't know if it was stressful, but um, I just had things preoccupying me. So I'm going to remove these diapers from my shoulder. Don't worry about those. And we are going to be interrupted by, not interrupted, but we are going to be graced with the presence of Val, Nova, and River at some point. So, I, you know, that's going to happen. Hello, all mo mo most home bus. Welcome back. And hello, Javier. Welcome. All right. So, like I said today, straight Q&A. So feel free to um, drop any questions you have in the chat. And I'm going to go to my community post, which I made earlier today or yesterday, and answer the questions that I got there. Look out for my community posts, um, because sometimes I pull you on things or ask you questions or ask you to ask me questions. Um, if I can find them, I should be good at this. Community. Boom. Okay, so our first questions come from Julie, and she asked a lot of great ones, a lot of super good ones, and we're going to address some of them. So Julie's first question is a really interesting one. She does not know how to properly size DC wires, and what are the items that are running on DC? Totally understandable question. <clears throat> so DC wiring is... Um, it's one of the more complicated parts of wiring because getting wire sizes correct is the, um, it's one of the most important things you can do in your wiring. And you may not, uh, it, it's just not super, if you, if you don't know this trick I'm about to tell you, it's not super obvious, but essentially you need to get each of your amperages for your products and which products you're going to use, we're going to get to shortly. But let's say you have a 12 volt DC pump. You need to go find that pump and figure out how many amps it uses while it's running. Okay, let's just say it uses four. Okay, it uses four amps. Now you're going to go to the Blue C wire size calculator. Go to this website, if you would, and check it out. I'm dropping it in the chat right now. And uh, maybe someday we'll screen share this, but today it's just going to be follow along. So this is a critical tool for sizing your DC wires. It's a funny first question. It's so technical. Hello, hello, George. Thank you for coming from Greece. And hello, Victor from Mexico. Wow, we are super international today. Canada, Mexico, and Greece. So in this, the first thing you have to do on this page is accept their terms. Basically, they're saying if you blow up your house, it's not our fault. And now we have, we've got a couple things. And if you guys could just go to this website and follow along, um, we've got our circuit circuit voltage in DC which is in, this, in our case, 12 volts. We're running 12 volt appliances. And we're gonna use four amps for our make-believe um, water pump. And now we've got our length of our conductor. This is round trip. If you click, if you put your mouse over this length of conductor text, it'll tell you the total length of the conductor is the supply wire and the return. So it's a round trip length. So let's just say it's 30 feet because it's going let's say from underneath your bed to the center of your bus where your electrical cabinet is. We're gonna leave the allow, allowable voltage drop at three 
Um, we're just going to say it's a fixed load. Technically, it's a variable row. Eh, we'll change it to variable, but it might be fixed. Um, if you, yeah, Let's just say we're running it for an hour for some reason. We'll just say it's fixed. And um, and that's it. Uh, we there's there's usually okay right here we have in conduit or sheath. We are definitely going to say it's in a conduit or a sheath because it probably is, and it might even be in insulation. And anyways, we're going to click calculate, and now I know I need 14 gauge wire. So that's how you do that. You figure out how many amps. You figure out the length. You go to the blue C wire size calculator, and you type in your numbers. And then you're going to get, so he, so here's a, here's a little trick. You're pretty much always going to get 14 gauge, 12 gauge, sometimes 16 gauge or 18 gauge. And when I build a bus, I end up buying a lot of 14 gauge and a lot of 12 gauge. And you could, if you want to, just run your lights, your max air fans, your, um, your water pump on 14 gauge. And then if you have a really long run, um, and maybe like like our, my strip plates, for example, they actually use a lot of power. So if you have a long run, you might you, you might need 12. But that's how you size them. And um, so to answer your question, what things go on DC? Uh, um, because you're wondering if your DC lighting and your pump should be DC. The things that generally go on DC are your lights, your water pump, uh, and your fans. And if I'm, I'm probably missing some because I seem to have a lot. Oh yeah, of course, outlets. If you want to have straight plug-in outlets, and if if you're if you're remembering things, I'm not um, that everybody has. I honestly think that's it. Now I ended up having like 18 DC circuits. Oh, sorry, having problems with hesitation feed. Does anybody having problems with the feed? I'm sorry to interrupt. Is anybody else having problems with the feed? Let me know. So, uh, so yeah. So those those four things are the most common, and the reason you want to run those on DC is because they're more efficient, and if you can increase your efficiency, you can last for longer off grid. And okay, yeah. So Relac is mentioning um, igniting the water heater in the stove. Okay, we're gonna. All right, I need to. I need to not get distracted until I've answered the question. So the reason to wire things with DC is it's more efficient. And um, in our wild caravan, we actually did a DC refrigerator, which has its cons because the DC refrigerators are crazy expensive. They're like almost two thousand dollars to get a big one. You can get an AC refrigerator for like three hundred bucks, but if you have a DC refrigerator, DC lights, DC um, ignited diesel heater, for example, and DC outlets and your DC water pump, you could turn your inverter off and be totally fine. You want to go to bed, turn your inverter off because you you know you're not using any AC power. You can increase your efficiency in that way. So um, that's your first question. And I'm going to go to the rest of your questions. This is such a funny tech, like super technical way to start this out, but I'm into it. Um, Julie. Julie gets to go first because she saw my community post asking for questions. Um, okay, so I addressed the first part. How do I add up the load to figure out how many batteries I need? Okay, we can we can go into that. Let's talk about how do you have electricity without your solar panels connected? That's a good question. And the way I handle that is pretty simply. I'm going to drop a video of mine in the chat. It's going to take me just a second to find it. But this is actually me installing my DC, my AC to DC converter pretty early on in my build because I didn't have the money for my lithium batteries. So I installed this. And I'm sorry, you're going to have to watch a video of mine from 2019. I don't, I don't know if it's watchable or not. I haven't watched it in many years. But here it is right here. This is what I purchased. It's in the chat right now. It is a uh, DC. Sorry, it's an AC to DC converter. So you can plug a fuse block into the converter, and then you can plug the converter into an outlet or into an extension cable. And then you can have your DC lights, your fan running, your pump if you want to. 
while you're building. So that's how you handle that, that video in the chat right now. All right, Julie, do we have any more questions from Julie? You wanted to know how to size your battery bank. So there's two ways to size your battery bank. One of them's kind of convoluted. It's, it's the official way to do it. It's sort of technical. You take all of your loads and actually um, Sam did this. If you look at my, my spreadsheet, my spreadsheet is in the description. Um, if you look on the, there's a page tab, it's a secret tab. If you click on it, you can actually see Sam's early wire, um, wire sizes, wire runs, and also um, how much power he was expecting them to use. I actually did that too when I was building my bus. So you basically, you take everything, you take your induction cooktop and you say, okay, it uses 1800 watts, which um, 1800 watts um, divided by 12 volts is, I don't know how many amps. And uh, let's just say it's 10. Um, and let's just say I'm going to use this for 45 minutes a day. Okay, so 10 amps times four, well, for the sake of ease, we'll make it an hour. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lose 10 amp hours to my stove. You add all that up in a spreadsheet, and then you just approximate what you're going to need. But the approach that I take is a little bit different. Um, I think you should buy as many batteries as you could afford. If it's a bus, four is probably, and you're doing anything all electric like me, um, four is likely the minimum. You can get by with two probably if you go like DC refrigerator and you go propane cooking and you go propane water heating. You can probably get by with two. And you can definitely get by with four um, if you're conservative. And we, we did six and six has done us well. And Sam and Katie did eight and they have literally no electrical concerns at all. So two, four, six, eight, figure out which one is right for you and just accommodate the decisions that you made with your lifestyle. That's my approach. You can also do it the other way. All right, so I'm gonna hit the chat up for questions. And we had some great input. We have, you, we're, we've got some really smart minds um, over here in the chat. I Okay, so Mr. Smith, I, I don't know why I still can't say your first name. Says to avoid all that, you could just use 12 gauge in the whole bus. Yes, you could. You could use 12 gauge for all of your DC wiring. Um, probably, unless you have an extremely long run and something that draws a lot of power. However, it would be very expensive. Uh, marine grade wire is, is pretty expensive. So I would take the time to figure out what can run on 14 or even 16 gauge. But you could just do 12 for everything. So Julie, you, you mentioned, you asked, does AC wire not go to the outlets? So when I'm saying uh, I have, uh, we've got basically residential AC outlets. Um, I've got one underneath my uh, dinette over here, which is a pretty annoying place to put one. But over by the driver's uh, seat, I have DC outlets because I know I'm just going to be plugging in a phone or a GPS. So I have both AC and DC receptacles would be the proper term probably. Javier says, come visit us in California. We were in California and man, it's hard. You know, when you're traveling full time with a family, it's really hard to visit anybody. Um, but I would love to meet everybody. I would love to meet everybody. But I'll probably be back in California someday. Madison Busman, welcome back. Says, how many AC circuits did you install? I installed, let's go to my electrical cabinet. It's, oh, it's so dark in there, but... Why not? So I've got an eight spot panel and those eight spots can each accommodate breakers that have two, uh, two breakers. I, I ripped out the lights in here. I shouldn't have done that just so I could show you guys. But over there is my AC panel and that has eight slots and among those so in those eight slots, I can use 16 runs. And I used about 14 of them, maybe 13. Maybe 13. And some of them are, th are for things that I don't often use. Like there is a 20 amp outlet direct from that panel into my undercarriage for um, outdoor usage. But do I use it often? Not really. And could I get away with it by just like throwing an extension cable out the window? 
Yeah. It really depends how convenient you want to make things. Like I like to I like to make things slightly less convenient than I should because I don't want to waste time or money. Um, it's already hard enough and expensive enough to execute this. So I think eight to 12 circuits would be pretty normal. Youngsters clothing, what is up, my friend? Um, so dad's property, are you saying that you use 12 gauge only? Cool, it totally works. I think that's what you're saying. Um, do you like the all-in-ones, solar generator? Do I like the solar generator? Okay, really good question from Hope Bus. I think that the solar generators are not adequate for my electrical needs. Um, as a backup source of power, they're great. I have one from Jackery. I think it's great. It's I don't. It's not like an everyday item that I use. However, that being said, if you go really low budget, not not really low budget. If you go low budget, and you optimize for DC, they are making some all-in-ones now that are quite powerful. And I think we are on the cusp of being able to use them exclusively to power our rigs. Forty foot schoolie 40 foot all electric schoolie no way but a shorter bus with less electrical needs like you know you're not doing a mini split with a all-in-one solar generator but i like them and i i get emails from companies all the time saying hey can you check out can you review our solar generator and um i think i'm just waiting for the right time to do that to check out more because i really want to know if we can skip all this madness i think someday we can get a battery bank, a charge controller, an inverter, all in one. And that would be really cool. Okay. All mo mo most bus. All mo mo. All mo mo most home bus. <laughs> That's fun. Interior build out. I'm about to finish that. Any regrets the way you did that on the Gillig? What do you mean exactly? Um, I do not have. And your, my interior build out, I don't really have regrets. I do have a 15 regret video. I'll find that for you. In case you haven't seen it, these are the things that about uh, five months, four months, five months into full-time life on the road, I did um, address that question. I did ask myself, what do I regret? And it wasn't anything extremely significant. Um, I, sh I lie. There are, there are some significant things. Like I, I kind of wish I went with a 35 foot bus. Oh, it was only seven regrets. All right. I'm dropping this in the chat for you. Um, I, I kind of wish I went 35 foot bus, but I also love the Gillig so much. I don't think I would give up the Gillig for 35 feet less. Youngsters clothing. I got here late. Did you already say what are good solar panels to get? Ooh, good question. So um, here's my thing with solar panels. Anything that you, and I might be wrong, I really might be wrong about this, but anything that you buy online, you're going to have to, somebody's got a price in the shipping costs of that thing. And um, when you buy something like, I don't know, five 200 watt panels, you're, use, you're losing the efficiency of scale. And if you go to a residential solar installer distributor, they're selling they're they're selling the largest panels that they can because who wants to put on 30 panels when you can put on 20 and so in my opinion a 400 watt um, commercial which is 60 by 80 or residential which is 60 by I hope I have these right no 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 40 by 80 is commercial and 40 by 60 these are the dimensions 40 inches this way by 80 inches this way is a commercial panel and you can get those well over 400 watts. You can also get, if you don't want so much overhang on the roof or you've got a smaller rig and that would just look a little ridiculous, you can get a, four, a residential 40 by 60 inch panel. And you can get them much cheaper at these distributors. And I would gladly drive an hour away to buy my panels from a distributor if I was getting six, seven, eight, nine, four, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, so that's the way I do it. I Google solar distributor in my area. I call them and I say, hey, I'm building a bus. I'm not a solar installer. Will you sell me some panels? What do you have? What's a good value? Because you can get like they might have the the most powerful panel is not the best price point. And I want a pretty powerful panel that is a good price point. But besides that, I don't care what the brand is. 
they're pretty much all the same when you're buying these panels from the distributors. That's my take on it. I, I don't really, I, I've never done it and I've never fully assessed it, but I don't understand why people are buying like seven or six, 10, 100 watt Renogy panels and installing those. Maybe it's because they need to fit things around um, their fans and stuff on the roof, but that's my take on it. Cover that roof and solar panels on a rack with as much as you can. That's my take. I hope that answers your question. Uh, probably well beyond. Okay. Uh, Madison Bussman asks, uh, we're just going straight electrical this time. That's great. I love it. Are there any GFCI outlets? So residential code wants you to have ground fault circuit interrupting outlets anywhere where you will be interacting with water, which means that they are required in a kitchen and near a bathroom vanity. Now, I like to take residential code and apply some of my own common sense. So I do have a GFCI right there hiding behind that Berkey because there's my sink, right? So I could easily have, I don't know, some water in the sink and I could have an appliance and it could be knocked into the sink and maybe I have my hand in the sink and now I get full on electrocuted. But over here, uh, it's not gonna happen because there's no sink. So there's an outlet right there. It's behind that coffee maker, and that's not a GFCI. Um, I think that's my only GFCI in the whole bus. They're more, they're significantly more expensive. But anywhere where you're going to be interacting with water, I do recommend that you have a GFCI. And we're about to have some visitors, so I'm going to take a quick break from questions. I'm going to read them. Hey, baby. What you got there? You want to say hi to the live? Nova's Nova loves this stuff. So that's the glowworm interior. It's show and tell. You guys falling asleep for these lovely nursery rhymes? All right, I'm gonna turn this up, okay? Why? Well, I gotta keep talking. And another way to turn it off is like the switch. This. Yeah, you're a pro at that. <laughs> Let's see if anybody's saying hi to Nova. Yep, Madison Bossman says hi, Nova. This is what I really should be doing. <laughs> Rebex says you're adorable. Tammy says hi, Nova. Julie Johnson says Who's hi. Tam Tammy's, Tammy's um, here for school support. Hey. Well, you want to show off your, look at that. Nova made this today in a bit of an art class. Larry says hello to Nova. <laughs> Mr. Smith says, Nova, she's, he says that you're famous and you don't even know it. Do you, do you know you're famous? Do you know you're famous? You told me yesterday that, um, that you don't want to be famous. But I'm not sure. It's it's a bear. It's a a bear with with a, a lot lot of colors in it. Can you see it? <laughs> this is the this is the face, and this is the butt. <laughs> That's a great bear. And these and this is the leg, and it's le and it's. <laughs> And it's looking down at the ground. It carefully walk, walk, walking down. Super descriptive. Wow, I didn't know that there was that much going on in your painting today. It's very cool. Very, very cool. All right, thanks, guys, for or thank you, Nova, for attending this intermission. Is it okay if I go back to answering questions? Oh, uh, mommy's saying you get to watch number blocks. No? Okay, well, you can hang out. Okay, but I'm going to answer the questions, okay? All right, we're going back to the solar stuff. And um, oh, I've missed a lot. Oh, boy. I've missed a lot. I'm looking for questions. Let me know if you see any question marks.
What are your thoughts on tankless water heaters compared to like a five or seven gallon water heater? If you are doing tankless electric, that's a no-go. It uses too many amps at once. It's going to overload your inverter. Pretty much impossible, I believe. If you're doing gas, then um, tankless just means on demand, and that's great because you don't have to waste any energy um, storing hot water. So I hope that answers it. Um, oh, so we're going back to all Momo, most home buses, question about the interior build out. Do I regret, regret using only plywood panels and not framing to make my walls like this one right here? Absolutely not. Those things are fantastic. It's a little bit tricky to get that wall in. Each, each wall took me close to, at least when I was learning, it took me a whole day to do one wall, which is tough, you know, when you have to do like eight walls. Um, but no regrets at all. They are rock solid. The only thing is that, you know, using straight sheets, like that's a whole sheet of plywood because it's over 24 inches wide. So that's a whole sheet, which means that that's like, you know, a 60 or $70 wall and that stuff adds up. But from a, from a builder standpoint, no regrets at all. I won't do it um, any other way as, as long as I can help it because you, you lose no space. <laughs> what? All right. Um, do you have, so Tammy asks, do you have any really good references for wiring a bus conversion, com conversion completely DIY? We're getting to that point. I just joined, so I don't know if you answered that question. <clears throat> so I don't, I really don't. Um, well, I suppose, I suppose when I was learning, um, Will Prouse's DIY solar forum.com is a pretty, I haven't visited it in two, in two years probably, but there are some really smart people there. Um, I think that you, you have to do some reading. You have to do some learning. Um, I made several videos about it. So, hey baby, we, we can't let, we can't let this interrupt me. Okay. We're going to leave it off. Okay. Hey Nova. This is the last time I'm going to ask. Okay. And then I'll have to ask you to leave the feed because, um, it's a little bit disruptive. Okay. All right. So, um, so the way my approach to solar is like you really need to spend six hours learning about it and before you um before you've got the whole picture you got to start putting it to work so you need to just try like do like start it so when i knew like 75 percent or 60 percent of what i was going to be doing with the whole electrical system i went ahead and i wired some outlets I wired um, outlets around the bus. And now I understand that to wire an outlet correctly, we need to create a round trip circuit with a wire um, to and from a breaker that eventually connects to an electrical source, whether that's an inverter or the grid. And that's a piece of the puzzle. Now, understanding that you need a wire that's of a certain size to handle a certain current for an extended period of time to go to a circuit and then back from the circuit to its source, it's a very important piece of the puzzle. And from there, you will start to understand 70% of the task at hand or 80% of the task. Um, okay. So, <clears throat> so that's basically how I approach it. It's a combination of reading, watching videos and getting your hands on the actual things. Before you figure it all out, start doing things and um, obviously try and do them safely. And I personally, uh, I like to start, it doesn't really matter if you start with AC or DC. DC is the same as AC. The only difference is that um, you're going to be using di different voltages and one of them is being inverted and one of them is straight from a battery source. Uh, hopefully that made sense. Okay. Dorian says, I know you spoke about this, but I'm purchasing a coach bus, MCI Detroit with Allison Trans, a little over 200,000 miles. 46K is their offer. Does that sound reasonable to you? So Dorian, I'm sorry, you asked that question so long ago, but is that for a finished bus or is that just for the bus? If that's just the bus, I, it, it, you're going to need a lot more money. You, you're not going to get the bus conversion done without a hundred grand most likely. So if that's for a finished bus, yeah, MCIs are great. Detroit diesels are great. 
Um, they're a little bit of a different beast from the school bus conversion, but okay. I, okay, I bought mo 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 bust mo 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 bus. That's what I'm going to say from now on. You bought 12 commercial utility generation panels from Facebook Marketplace. Yeah, nice. Those are probably cheap. Facebook Marketplace in urban areas does seem to have um, used used or unused panels. It's whole stacks of them for cheap. And definitely look out for that. River Stick says I got the four. 415 watt panels you sent me to at green tech but they don't like to deal publicly okay river so that's a little annoying um you because the solar distributors they really want to they want to deal with solar installers because they don't want they want to allow the installers to be the middlemen and they don't want to lose they don't want anybody to lose profits in that transaction so they don't like to deal with the public but you just need to keep calling and frame your um, your ask in different ways until you get a sales associate who's like, yeah, of course I'll sell you some panels to put on your bus. So when I call a solar distributor, I say, hey, I'm doing a bus conversion. Have you seen those? I need eight solar panels. Yeah, my Wi-Fi's on. Yep. <laughs> Thanks guys for hanging in there. Um, our, uh, okay, my train of thought has been a little bit interrupted. <laughs> Um, basically, long story short, you need to keep asking them to sell you panels and say, hey, look, there's no solar installer who's going to be servicing this bus of mine. I'm doing this myself. Can you guys sell me eight panels? And uh, just keep asking. Just keep bothering them until they sell you the panels. The fact if they say we do not sell panels to the public, that is not incredibly true because I've gotten several distributors to sell panels. All right. River Six says, when you cover the roof and solar, the van or bus is always in the shade as well. Um, so I put my panels in three series, three parallel, so that if the back is in, in the shade, the front are not. And we're, we're really never in full shade. Um, unless you're in a dense campground in the forest, you're, you're not in full shade. If you are in that situation, you either need to plug in or you need to um, be moving in a day or two. Okay. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Thank you guys for giving Nova love about her picture. She's very proud about that. What do you recommend for vapor barriers with non spray foam insulation? That's a good question. Vapor barriers, in my opinion, are not essential. We don't need one between the subfloor and the metal floor. Um, we, well, I just, I just don't think you need one. I've, um, I'm not sold on that. Generally, I don't see people always using vapor barriers. Sometimes I see people use them, but. Exhaust fans, should they be added? I think that a, I think one, I think for any bus conversion, one to two and maybe even three, I call them max air fans, but you can get a fantastic fan as well. Basically a roof mounted exhaust fan is essential. I don't have them. That's one of my seven regrets. I went with the uh, marine grade hatches. The idea was that we would just push them open and put a screen in. Right now that one has a screen in it and it is pushed open and it does passively move air. And if I open this window right here, air will start to flow from here and through that. However, it'd be much better if I could actively send air out at all times because then I could keep the windows closed if it's raining or if it's buggy and that max air fan will pull air from the cracks around the bottom of the bus anywhere it will find it'll create it will create airflow so i think exhaust fans are super important really good question we got a motor question how do you feel about the dt466 motor it's in a 2006 40 foot pusher i am highly interested in i think that the dt46 is 466 is probably the most revered engine in the bus space, especially for a 40 footer. The only competitor probably is the Cummins 83 or a Detroit diesel if you're into the very old engine styles. But 
Yes, that's a great motor. Um, the only caveat, like I would, if that's the bus you like, I would 100% buy it. But if it has an Allison AT545 transmission, that transmission is known for overheating, um, for, for getting too hot. And it's, uh, it's not extremely adequate at um, stopping your bus without braking going down a grade. So generally, we try and avoid the AT545 in a 40-foot bus. And when it's coupled with a DT466, it, um, it's, it's caused engines to blow up early. I, I'm not the, <laughs> that's a super paraphrased version of the actual answer to that question, but that's a great engine. You should get that one. Do you have any recommendations for undercarriage boxes for people who have no welding experience? Yes. I installed um, Facebook Marketplace undercarriage boxes, and I'm going to drop the link to that video below here. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, basically they make these truck toolboxes. These are for flatbed trucks. Uh, yeah, you got it. That's perfect. Is that working? No. FRZU 4659. Yeah, 4659. River. Okay, we got to get river. All right, so... I'm actually, where, where is that video? Where is that video? If you don't want to weld, this is how I recommend installing boxes. As long as you don't put a ton of weight in these boxes, I think it's okay. Boom, it's in the chat. All right, I'm gonna try and speed up a little bit. So, oh, sorry, you can't see River. Here's River. Hey, baby. She let you say hi, right? You say hi. You say hi. Hi. Okay, so River. This glue cap belongs on the glue so you don't get sticky. But you can play with it, but you got to keep the, the cap on, okay? All right. Um, we got some good questions in here. All right. Hope, Hope Bus says we paid 11K for a 45 foot MCI with bus seats. Yeah. Cool. Julie Johnson says, is a 4,000 watt inverter too big for four 206 amp hour batteries? Nope. That's a fine size. Let's see here. Youngsters Clothing says, is it better to use more batteries than you need or would it be overkill if your solar system can't produce enough energy to charge them? Well, um, at some point, of course, the returns are diminishing. Um, you do want to have a nice balance between lots of solar panels and batteries. Um, but I think, honestly, if you can afford, if you can afford batteries there's really no much there's no such thing as too much there's only there's only spending too much money that you didn't have to all right mo 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 bus says three rv fans are almost enough to cool my bus on a hot day yeah so you can if you are going to be traveling with the weather you can skip air conditioning you can go max air fans maybe have a um a couple 12 volt fans that will blow air on you in places that you spend a lot of time in. And you can totally go without AC. I definitely think that that is a pretty good idea, as long as you're not traveling to extremely hot places in the summer. Youngsters Clothing says, I've noticed a lot of school buses have two to three AC units in them. How are they to run them off just the three bus batteries? So they are using um, alternator power. So I don't actually know how it works, but they are not running off them off the bus batteries. They're running them off the alternator. Okay, the Tesla bus is mentioning that the AT545 won't likely be on a 2006. I actually missed the fact that your bus is a 2006. That is good news that the 2006 pusher would probably have an MD3060 because that's a great transmission. If you've got a, if you want a 40 footer and you can find a DT466 with an MD3060, that bus is going to be a beast. Tammy says, random question. I just saw your wife walk down the bus. Did you guys need to stiffen your suspension? Our Bluebird is incredibly rocky, but it's also completely empty. Our air suspension um, with our very large wheelbase um, I'd, I'd actually, I'm not sure how we would stiffen it, um, but we have an air suspension, airbags front and back. 
And the bus does rock a little bit if you are running or bouncing around it. I don't think it, I don't think I notice it anymore. But with the leaf spring suspension, you might have a different experience. And I do think that, um, I do think it's going to stiffen up a little bit, but yeah, you, you might need to um, do some suspension work if you're super rocky, which is not something I've experienced before. Joseph Hill Sr. says, if I'm chasing weather, should I do spray foam? Mm, I like Havelock. I do. I like Havelock. I like Max Air fans. I don't. And I like windows. I, I think unless you're going, unless you need to stay in Texas or Florida in the summer where you need to be in, you know, New Mexico or wherever it's very cold in the winter, spray foam from an R value perspective is 100% going to be better. But if you're going to keep all these, win these windows and you're going to chase nice weather, I don't think it's worth the hassle. I think <laughs> installing the Havelock wool insulation was just, so easy. Okay, the Tesla bus um, is adding to my. <laughs> so I said, oh yeah, of course, yeah, of course. I'm sorry. So I said, well, I guess that's similar. the The uh, alternator has belts on it. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not a bus mechanic. I'll tell you guys that much. But he said that the he or she has mentioned that the AC units that are in a bus run off of a compressor on the engine belt on the engine belt so the engine runs it pretty cool love as apologetics has three air conditioners running off of their batteries are are your air conditioners um window units could because those can be very powerful and efficient which is pretty cool i i'd love to find a way to aesthetically install window units into a bus it can be done <clears throat> All right, guys. So I have finished. I've reached the bottom of the chat. So thank you guys so much for your questions. You are totally welcome to continue asking them. I, what do I have to talk about? Well, I, I need to mention my spreadsheet. Um, my spreadsheet is helpful. It's linked below. You've probably seen it by now already, but it's down there. It has every single thing that we bought on our wild caravan. And the other thing is that um, I'll be doing these schoolie support live streams for a while. I don't know if it'll be forever, but uh, I should mention every time that if you would like one-on-one -on -one help from me, I have a Patreon where you can sign up for a monthly membership. And then you can call me at any time if you need help. And if you need extensive help with your electrical system or you need your questions answered on the fly, I will totally be there for you. Spreadsheet for the win. Thank you. Okay, yeah, I want to talk about these window units. How many window... So Love as Apologetics has three small window units. And I'm wondering how many uh, watts they draw because they're totally awesome. And, um, and you are framing them into your under compartment. So does that mean that you are ducting them into your living space? Because I think that's a really cool idea. I think that having those really efficient AC units under the bus, somehow sending the air up would be great. Um, and you're in Florida, so you need, you need that. Yeah, I built our wild caravan in Florida, in St. Petersburg, and I did it in the winter and it was absolutely lovely. Uh, but in the summer, it would have been pretty tough. And Katie and Sam did some building in the summer, and it looked hot, <laughs> looked very hot. Of course, I built, I did my spray foam um, trimming in South Carolina, uh, June or July or August, and um, it was 100 plus on the bus for about five days, and that was pretty rough. But it's over. Okay. So Love is Apologetics has a 40 foot flat nose and they're ducting them from the under compartment. That's a really cool idea. If you have space on your bus, especially a compartment, well, it doesn't even have to be in a, a compartment, but if you, yeah, mounting, mounting um, window units underneath the bus and then ducting them into the bus would be totally hidden 
and you could do those um, those window units, which only use 500 to 600 watts. But I do, I will point out that my my mini split in the bedroom, while it if I put it on like turbo mode, it'll use like 900 watts, a thousand watts. But if I just turn it on and ask it to send cold air out, it only uses 600 watts also. So if you are only installing one, I would do the mini split and I would hide it underneath the bus. Oh, cool. Gotham has Gotham has an important question. And it's the most important question. How do you earn while you are traveling? Can you suggest websites? It's such a hard, it's such a hard question because it's going to be so different for everybody. Um, the way that we earn money while traveling is through content creation. So I like to call it intellectual property because um, I think that's what it's been for a long time. Like if you write a book, right, that's intellectual property. It sounds very proper, but my um, I'm passionate about videos. So I, re I really like education and I like videos. And my goal here is to, um, it's to sort of like serve a need um, that I've learned how to serve. Um, and hopefully I can monetize that in the process. So my spreadsheet has affiliate links. And if you click on the products and then buy them or buy anything else, I get a commission or that Patreon where you can hire me to be your consultant. That's another small income stream and the AdSense revenue from my videos. So that's that in addition to some real estate investments that I made um, before leaving, which Unfortunately, it's not replicable. Like it took me a long time to establish those. That's how I do it. That's how we do it. And um, to be honest, it's not always enough. Um, it really depends on how well the intellectual property is doing out there in the world. But if I was in a position where I didn't have that, I would um, be building a skill, a marketable skill, or using a skill that I have um, to work remotely. So I think that if I, like, if you just took me right now and said, uh, I'm unemployed, um, what am I going to do? I need it. I need an income. And I've, I've made 150 YouTube videos. Well, I could be, I could be an editor for another channel and I could probably charge 25, 30, $40 an hour to edit for another channel that maybe has monetization figured out a bit better. And you can learn everything I've learned through Skillshare. You can also use, you can also learn it through YouTube. And um, as far as getting a job as a YouTube editor, for example, you're probably going to have to put in some upfront work. Like you're going to have to edit for free for somebody. Um, but that's just an example. Basically, you need passive income, which is kind of like what I work on, or you need to create an active skill that you can trade your time for money. That's like, there's no cheat codes, really. I wish there were just total cheat codes. But a lot of us in the bus conversion world, like we're working on being influencers and content creators. And um, my angle is kind of education and entertainment. And maybe it should be comedy because that's fun. But I just don't think I'm funny. I've heard other people say I'm funny, though. So maybe I'm funny. All Mo 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 Bus says, how, how well does the mini split work on a really hot day? Um, for the bed, it works amazing. You can make that bed cold all the time. For the whole bus, you're not doing it. The front of the bus has way too much window area that you're going to lose your, uh, your cool air from. So there's really no escaping a super hot day. You need shade. You need um, more BTUs of cooling. You need... AC power. That's really like, it's, it's kind of all there is to it. And airflow. That's really important too. Airflow. I wish I had a better answer to the question. How do I make money from the road? I, I, I actually want to, I want to investigate that further because it would be cool to know. Relac asks, can you go over registration and insurance? How do you go about that? All right. For insurance, Call Kelly Newsom at Allstate 
for insurance. She must be getting 100 calls a day from Schooly Converters. For registration, that's going to depend on your local um, laws. <laughs> River's back. You back, River? You sleepy? I'm going to put you to sleep really soon, okay? She's sleepy. So the registration, basically, you have to you have to prove that your bus is an RV now and not a bus. Oh. And you need to look up the regulations for your local area. And you need to you need to actually probably call the DMV. And the DMV is going to have no idea what you're talking about. Just be, be persistent. Say, hey, just so you know, you, nobody's ever done this before at your DMV office. But you can turn a school bus into an RV. I just need to know the process for doing that. But it's going to be local to you. So you, you've got to like... You've got a river. Do you have to touch the keys? All right. We're doing just a few. We're doing just a few more questions. Javier says, Justin, one of the first things I bought for my Phantom build was a composition toilet. Since then, I think I'm convinced to go with either a standard RV style or a fully electric incinerator toilet. And we have another question. Oh, that's from Javier. Do you stand by the composition toilet? Javier, if you have a family of four pooping in your toilet, it's not a compost and toilet anymore. It's mostly a bucket um, that's dehydrating. And it won't necessarily be able to dehydrate fast enough. But if you have two people, it's awesome. And if you can use it sparingly, it's also awesome. You need some water. I got to get rid of some water. Here you go. Here's your water. Now, I, I don't think that having a black tank and having a an RV style toilet is um, is really that bad of an idea. It's an it's an extra annoyance that you have to dump this black tank, but you have to dump your gray tank anyway. Um, so and you're gonna use so basically you're gonna use more water and you're going to have to dump that tank more frequently. And with a composting toilet, you can stay off grid longer. It's a fact. But managing your waste is is honestly one of the hardest things about the bus conversion. Not having like residential plumbing managing your waste and keeping water in your bus is harder than keeping solar power in your batteries at least if you did what we did if you don't end up with the with a solar system like us your mileage may vary um and oh the last thing i don't think anybody's pulled off the fully electric incinerator toilet i think it uses too much power but if you have a monster battery bank and solar i i feel like it's in i feel like it's in the cards i feel like it's possible to pull off an incinerating toilet, but I don't know that anybody's done it yet. Do, 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 do. Oh my gosh, River. River is so adventurous. Look what she's doing. River is only 14 months old and she can climb anything, which means you gotta keep an eye on her. All right. I think I see, I see one last question. I see one last question and I'm going to leave it at that. All right. So Madison Busman says, wondering if you see a difference between your bus and our wild caravan, 34 foot versus 40 foot and different insulation. So our wild caravan, because we blocked off this, um, basically they have a, a bedroom back there and they have a closet and they have a doorway. And that mini split can definitely cool from the bedroom through the closet. It also can hit the, the bathroom. And um, I think they're having a slightly better time with their mini split, um, mostly probably because of because they can truly block it off with the doorway. Um, I, I'm so sorry, guys. I really should have done some testing with the insulation. I should have gone Havelock wool versus spray foam. Let's lock the buses down. Let's see which one goes to what temperature at which time. And I'm really sorry I didn't do that because that would have been so, so useful for everybody. But maybe we'll meet up again and I can pull it off. Um, and I said that was the last question, but I'm, I'm a sucker for more questions. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you guys so much for being here. Every 8 p.m., Every Wednesday at 8 p.m. EST, schooly support. Come join me. Next time I'll have a topic to discuss. And um, now that I have figured out the screen share, the next thing I have to figure out is how to bring on a guest because we are not going to let me talk to the screen for an hour every week forever. We're getting some guests on here. 
So stay tuned for that. Look forward to that. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you for your kind words as always and for being supportive of my channel. Appreciate all of you and have a great night. Peace. You okay?